All right, let's continue with visual capture. Now, I actually mentioned this earlier on in this chapter um, that we tend to study vision so much because of the tendency towards visual capture, that when visual information conflicts with other senses, we tend to defer to our vision. Vision is the primary sense that humans rely on. Other, you know, your pets, maybe, maybe you have a dog or a cat, they rely on their hearing or their smell way more than they do vision. I mean, once they lock on something, you know, um, they're both of them being predator kinds of animals. Once they lock onto something, yeah, they are completely visually fixated, but they can lay there sort of dozing and move their ears around because they rely on vision a lot more. A dog, you know, they, they explore the world with their nose. Um, this is not us, you know, us humans, we tend to predominantly rely on vision. Anyone with visual impairment knows that it, the world is sort of set up to, ca to really um, capitalize on that, right? So there's a lot of signs and there's a lot of um, you know, colors used to indicate things and, and stuff because on average, humans will defer to vision as their primary source of information, especially, you know, obviously whenever possible. Um, so I'm going to introduce a bunch of examples of visual capture, and then I'm going to let you go into the playlist and see the examples that I've provided for each of them. Um, so the ventriloquist effect is a good example of visual capture. I mean, the only reason why we fall for ventriloquist at all is because we do start to look at the dummy while it's talking, right? And um, yeah, you, know, you might look over at the at the ventriloquist and say, "Wow, I don't see his lips moving." And then you you get pulled again to the dummy because we tend to think that the sound that we're hearing is coming from the mouth that's moving, right? So the ventriloquist effect is a good example of visual capture, and I've got an example of that in the playlist. Um, we also have expectations of how things are going to taste based on how they look. So for example, what color they are. Um, can you imagine if you were drinking lemonade and it was just lemonade and it was green, right? They just put a little blue drop in it, but now it's green. You may have a moment where you're like, am I tasting kiwi? Am I tasting apple? Am I like what, what green thing could this be? Is it melon? This is a very tart melon. This is very strange. What is this? Um, because you expect green things to taste like certain things, usually fruit, if I'm giving you a juice, I guess. Although everybody's been drinking those green smoothies, so maybe you might think it's that. Um, if it's, a, you know, a red clear liquid, you probably are going to expect it to taste, you know, like watermelon or cherry or strawberry or a normal fruit flavor. So if it tasted like, let's say, I don't know, beets <laughs> might be a little surprised but that's at least consistent okay let's think of something that's not red um, but that we might color red and you might be surprised by that flavor um, maybe it tastes like um, root beer and it's red that would be a strange moment where you're trying to figure out what exactly am i tasting right it's red so i expect it to be one of these fruit flavors or apparently beets um I recognize this flavor, but it's not right. It's not what I'm expecting, right? So based on the color, um, it could be based on shape or texture that you're expecting it to taste a particular way. And then uh, it may be um, incongruent and it causes you for a second to go, what am I eating? Like this doesn't, it's not what I expected. Um, recently, they changed the green Skittles from being a uh, lime to green apple, which I completely prefer. I totally prefer it. But I have to say the moment I ate it, I was like, what, what's wrong with this lime? <laughs> it doesn't taste right. It's green. It's a Skittles. It has to be lime, right? So this is not only just what color I thought it would, you know, the flavor should be, but also this is a Skittles and I've had Skittles in the past. Um, so my expectation was being imposed where I'm like, okay, I see the color. I know what color that flavor is. And then there was a moment when I could not identify that as green apple. I, I couldn't figure out what it was at first. Um, so that's what we mean by expectations, right? And vision can cause us to expect certain things. Um, the rubber hand illusion refers to something really clever that researchers did where they put um, a person has their hand on, on the left side and then a rubber hand on the right side. And the rubber hand is being reflected um, for the person so that it seems like it's, it's all in the right position. It could be their own hand. And so then they, uh, the person sees the rubber hand being touched and other things, and they believe they're, they're feeling it, right? Because it looks like it could be their own hand, 
they see something being done to the hand, they think it's really happening. So I have a little video to illustrate that because that's a fun one. Um, so you can watch that. And then there's the McGurk effect. This is another really fun one where, um, you know, if a person is saying a particular sound, you have to admit in English, there are a lot of speech sounds that could be easily confused, right? M versus N, um, B versus D. Like a lot of our speech sounds are very similar to each other. And so what we have to rely on is sort of context, um, you know, the way that the person's mouth is shaped, stuff like that to help us to figure out what exactly, which of the of these two phonemes they might be making. In the McGurk effect, they illustrate that by having a video where they impose the sound of one speech sound over the mouth shape of the other speech sound. And what you find is that you tend to rely on what you're seeing, not on what you're hearing. Um, so that video will illustrate that for you, the McGurk effect. And then this is an illustration of the McGurk effect also, which is they take films from the NFL and then they, they make up what the, what the players are actually saying, but they made it up, but it's, it's synchronized well enough with their mouth movement that it looks like that's what they're saying. So that one's just for fun for you to watch because it's a good illustration of the concept of the McGurk effect. All right, I'm going to stop here so you can go watch that playlist and then I will see you on the other side. We'll talk about embodied perception.